I've owned a few Jeeps over the last several years and they are so much fun to drive. They're a little raw, but yet still refined, and they're arguably the most capable off-road vehicle you can buy from the dealership. But now, Jeep has the Ford Bronco to compete with, and well, they kind of putting the Jeep Wrangler on its heels a little bit. There are some really nice features on this Bronco, and today I'm gonna talk about the top 10 features that I'd like to see on the Jeep Wrangler. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and I have been super excited driving around in this Ford Bronco for the last couple weeks. And I think I took people off guard a little bit when I purchased this because everybody seems to think that I'm this Jeep purist, this Jeep loyalist. And actually, nothing can be further from the truth. I love getting out and having awesome adventures. The Jeep Wrangler has just been the best tool for me to be able to do that. But when Ford announced that they were coming out with the Bronco, I was very intrigued. If anything, we knew that it was gonna create competition and make Jeep better and hopefully make the Bronco better as we go forward. Like 35 inch tires, Bronco announced that they were gonna have 35 inch tires as an option across all models. When they made that announcement, the Jeep Wrangler did not have 35 inch tires as an option. Now, recently they've come out with a new package on some of their higher end models where you can get 35s and I don't know if they had that in the plans for a long time, but it sure feels like it was kind of a last minute reaction because the Ford Bronco was doing that. So I'm excited to see what else Jeep might do going forward. And I'm gonna talk about the 10 features on the Bronco that I think Jeep should consider adding. The first two features on the Ford Bronco are somewhat related. First, I wanna talk about the lockers. You can turn the rear locker on while you're still in four high in the Ford Bronco. You can't do that in the Jeep Wrangler. And why is that important? Well, let's use an example from a trip I did last year where I was bombing through the desert in Death Valley and we hit this deep, nasty silt and boy, I had to keep the RPMs up and was really struggling to get through there. That would have been a great opportunity to be able to hit a rear locker and give me a little more traction. Most of the time when you're turning your lockers on, you're gonna, you're gonna be rock crawling and you're gonna be in four low anyway, but having the ability to just hit that when you need it and not having to stop the vehicle, put it in neutral, put it in four low, then turn your lockers on, that's a nice little feature. Plus, when you are using the GOAT modes, it automatically turns on that rear locker on the mud and ruts and the sand mode. So you get that right out of the box if you're using those modes or you can just do it manually. And that's the second feature I'd like to talk about is doing it manually. These buttons up here are so nicely placed. They call this their hero switch panel, which I think is really cool. You've got your sway bar disconnect, your front and your rear locker, your turn assist, your traction control, and your hazards. On the Jeep Wrangler, they're down low on the dash in front of your shift lever and your transfer case lever. So if you're driving along and you need to switch one of those buttons, you have to take your eyes off the road, fin finagle your hand down there, switch the things on and off, and then keep driving. Right here, you just barely glance. I barely have to take my eyes off the road. I like how they laid this out. I think it's a very clean design, and I think a feature that Jeep should consider adopting. One of the things folks love about the Jeep Wrangler and now the Bronco is the ability to take the top off, to take the doors off, and kind of immerse yourself into the environment and soak up what's around you, especially when you're out on the trail. And well, Ford Bronco took it up a notch by doing frameless door windows. So there is no frame around this window like there is on the Jeep Wrangler. And initially when I was driving this, I was like, wow, it feels more open, but I wanted to take some measurements just to find out for myself, and sure enough, this window is a little over three inches bigger than the one on the Jeep Wrangler. So just driving down with the windows up, you get a little more visibility. Now I know you can put half doors on a Jeep Wrangler, but if the rain hits, you're not rolling up the window. You gotta put on one of those plastic covers with the zipper. This is a lot more convenient, and I think frameless doors, I think it's a nice option if we could get that on the Jeep Wrangler. One of the features on the Ford Bronco that both my wife Regina and I really appreciate, and while it's not that big a deal, it is a nice convenience, and that is all four windows have auto up and auto down. On the Jeep Wrangler, you only get auto down on the front windows. You gotta hit those switches to do up or down on the rears and to get them back up on the front. It's nice just to have that. I know it's just a little tiny detail, but it's one that the Jeep Wrangler could adopt. Bronco's doing it. 
There's been many times over the years where I'm out wheeling in a tight technical section of trail and I scratch up my fender. And it really stinks if your fenders are painted because then you've tore up the paint on them. And I've even ripped off fenders entirely before. Sometimes it's just unavoidable and I've seen it happen to many friends as well. Well, the Bronco did something pretty clever. There are five quick release levers in here and all you need to do is undo those levers and you can pop the fender right off. How nice is that when you are out on a trail where you know things are gonna get tight and technical or maybe you're just temporarily in a bind and you need to move that fender so you don't mess it up. You can pull it off, get through that obstacle and then put it back on. Now, there are some aftermarket folks that are making some little covers for this. I think it looks cool, but practically having the fender so you keep that mud and rocks off of your door and messing up your paint is a nice benefit. I don't think I'll ever go fenderless, but to be able to take it off when I'm on that specific technical trail, that's a nice feature. All right, we're halfway done and I've got five more to go, but let me just take a moment and welcome anybody that's visiting Trail Recon for the first time. On this channel, we have some awesome off-road and overland adventures. We hang out in the garage and talk about gear. And in the upcoming couple months, we're gonna be comparing this Bronco with a Jeep Wrangler, doing some upgrades and just having a whole lot of fun. So we'd love to have you hit that subscribe button and join us for those future videos. Okay, let's talk about IFS, independent front suspension. I think everybody was a little surprised when the Bronco, which was supposed to be a direct competitor with the Jeep Wrangler, came out with IFS versus a solid axle. I myself was a little surprised. I love the solid axle and the capability that the Jeep Wrangler gives me. So far, driving on road, I will say the Bronco with IFS is much nicer to drive. Off-road, we'll find out how well it does. So for now, Jeep, keep your solid axle. Don't, don't go IFS, please. All right, now let's talk about the seats. In the Jeep Wrangler, let's be honest, the seats are nice, but on a long trip, they are not the most plush or comfortable. They're made for durability, and uh, honestly, the ones in the Bronco, so much nicer, so much more comfortable. I went with the vinyl seats, and these things are really soft and supple, and just the bolstering, the padding, it is a lot more comfortable. I think Jeep Wrangler could up their game and make their seats a little more comfortable like the ones here in the Ford Bronco. I had to start the Bronco to show you this next feature because as I was sitting here using it, it told me the battery was getting low and it was shutting off. And that is the zone lighting feature, which is really cool and I think is something that I'm probably gonna be using quite a bit. And that is the ability to turn on lights on different sides of the vehicle. And so if I click this one, I can turn on this light on or off. I can do the mirror on or off. I can turn the reverse lights on or off all around the vehicle, 360 degree lighting, which is really nice. If you roll up into camp, you can turn those on. You can kind of help see if you're out in the dark or if we're kind of cruising down the trail and I'm looking for a campsite or I'm looking for an obstacle, I can turn that on. That's a pretty cool feature and one that I think the Jeep should consider adopting. Now this time I'm gonna be a little bit nitpicky because both the Jeep Wrangler and now the Ford Bronco have front seats with rear mounting systems on the back of them, like a Molly style mount system. The Jeep Wranglers is, well, I don't know, it's never been really practical. I was never able to really mount stuff on the back of there. Weaving stuff in through those webs just was not easy. The Ford Bronco has been a little bit easier. It's a hard plastic system, but there's a nice gap in there that it makes it easy to mount your accessories. So on the passenger side, I've got radios, and over here, I've just got gear that I'd like to get to in a hurry. It actually works out really well. I think Jeep can improve their system a little bit. I don't know that they necessarily need to duplicate this, but they could make it a little more friendly for mounting stuff. Next up is the 360 degree camera system. It is very nice and not required to go off-roading, but wow, what a nice feature to have to be able to see all the way around your vehicle when you are in a parking lot or when you're out on the trail. This has got some pretty cool features. I like the front facing camera has the tire uh, track, so it tells you where your tires are gonna be placed. You've got your front view, you've got a side view, and it even gives you a view down of the front tires. I mean, look, one of my complaints about the Bronco is visibility over the hood, but this 360 degree camera, while it doesn't make up for it, it sure is a very nice feature. You don't need a 12 inch screen. I think the one in the Jeep is a good size, but having a 360 degree camera, I think that's a really nice option that maybe Jeep Wrangler should consider. The other one that I wanna talk about in, is also in the interior. On the Jeep Wrangler, during the JL announcement, 
they offer the four auxiliary switches. I'm so excited about that finally because I had installed an S-Pod in my Jeep Wrangler and I had all these switches up there. It was perfect uh, to make all your accessories work to have something from the factory like the Jeep Wrangler put in the JL model. Super nice. Well, I will say that the Ford Bronco took it up a notch. They did six switches instead of four and they put them up here, which is a lot more easy to access. So if you're trying to figure out which light to turn on or which accessory to turn on, you don't have to look down on the dash. You just flip them on up here. In fact, that's where they're at on my 2015 Jeep Wrangler, my aftermarket ones. I install them right here because that is the most functional place. I think Jeep should consider relocating their auxiliary switches. I like those. One of the biggest questions I've been getting asked since getting the Ford Bronco is, do I like it more than the Jeep Wrangler? The answer to that is no. I love the Jeep Wrangler platform. You know, I've had a couple over the years and they've served me well. They've been as capable as I need them to be out on the trail and they just have not let me down. The verdict's still out on the Ford Bronco. In fact, there's a few things that I don't like about the Ford Bronco and I think we'll save that topic for a future video. So more to come on that. Look, if you have not hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you for future videos and join us on some of our cool adventures. Also, make sure you go over to trailrecon.com and check us out. Thanks for watching.